on this episode of AV Week, leveraging hybrid systems that were put in post-COVID. NVIDIA announces a significant security flaw in one of their chipsets, and DNB purchases a UK distributor. All that and more, next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 507, recorded Friday, May 7th, 2021. Competing Factions. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by... Sure. Sound Extraordinary. And by... Chief the global leader in commercial AV mounting solutions, and by FSR. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host with us to discuss the news and information we have gathered this week. First and foremost, one of the gentlemen that I go to when I need questions answered, his name is Brock McGinnis. Welcome, sir. Hello, Tim. Great to be here. Also, from way across the pond uh, is my buddy, Mr. Jason Ward. Welcome, sir. Great to be back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us on a, well, what is for you, Friday evening. Um, But at some point, there will be a pint in your future, and I appreciate that. So uh, thanks so much. Uh, And first time guest, but I have known Tammy for a long time now, Tammy Fuquay uh, from Control Concepts and our buddies over at Dusty Greenblatt. So welcome, ma'am. Hi, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I met Tammy about a year ago. She was a part of our Learn From Home uh, segment uh, where uh, Brandy Alvarado and Corey Schaefer and, and the, the ladies at the Uvixa Women's Council took over uh, one of our sessions one night, and I met Tammy through through those folks. So I'm uh, very nice to meet you, and uh, so yeah. good to have you on. You also got me a job that way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, our friends over at AV Network uh, and SCN, German Audio uh, Technology and Solutions Company, DNB Solutions has purchased um, a uh, solutions. The uh, uh, has purchased um, the SFL Group out of the UK. Now, what that means is SFL. If you're not familiar with them, they are the distributor for DNB inside the UK. This is in line with a couple of other interesting moves from the manufacturing side over the last three or four years. Um, probably about three years ago now, uh, maybe two. Uh, Rico. Uh, which uh, some of you may or may not realize Rico is getting more and more into the, the AV industry. Uh, they purchased an integrator uh, in Germany called DataVision. Uh, they launched that, and then they've actually got a number of remote monitoring uh, contracts in and around um, the Europe. So we've got manufacturers moving more and more closer and closer uh, to, the, uh, to the end user and to technology managers and, um, you know, sort of competing somewhat. Uh, with with integration firms or in this case distributors, Brock, let's start with you on this. What does it do uh, to a, a, an infrastructure? What does it do to a market when manufacturers start getting closer and closer to the the, the finished product and to the, the the final customer? Well, as integrators, um, we've always hated the idea that manufacturers would sell direct to our customers, because how the heck do you compete with your manufacturer? Uh, and, uh, and it just, it really surprises me because the UK is a huge market, um, for, uh, for live sound, probably not over the course of the past year, uh, but there will be a bunch of pent up demand uh, as well as for, um, uh, for touring sound and DNB is, is very good at both of those. And now it would appear there's only one place in the entire country to go and buy it because if I'm an integrator in the UK, um, why would I sell DNB potentially in competition with my manufacturer? Um, I, 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 I think it's crazy, and I don't know what's behind it. All right. Jason, same kind of question here. You are in the UK. Uh, you know, you look at this from a, a standpoint of sort of, you know, eventually competing with, you know, manufacturers or, you know, the, their, their distributor partners. You know, what does this do when you start looking at, you know, whether it's designs or it's your, your relationship with those manufacturers? I, th- I think just, just to begin with, Tim, um, the, the DMB play doesn't affect what we do, what I do on a day-to-day basis. But relate that, I, think, I don't think it's a new problem. Um, if you're honest with yourself and look at your competitor list, 
So if I was honest with myself and looked at my competitor list, I'd name Cisco as a competitor, even though I'm a Cisco partner, right? Because their guys go out in the field, talk to the clients directly, um, and will sell against you in opportunities that you're in um, with their gold partners. So it, it doesn't feel like a new thing to me. But when you muddy the water, your trust breaks down, right? We're coming back to some of some of Brock's comments. There's going to be a big trust issue off the back of this, isn't there? Well, there is, and it also, you know, that there is that potential for, you know, the, the you, you mentioned Cisco. There are some manufacturers here in the States that, that have programs where they don't sell directly necessarily to large enterprise, but they do certainly call on them, right? And, and from the manufacturers, what the manufacturers would say is they are simply driving demand. They're creating demand. And the same thing has, has happened and existed in higher education um, and, as well as in, in, as in government, right, where you have business development representatives that will go out and they'll meet with Fortune 100, they'll meet with Notre Dame, they'll meet with USC, you know, and, and to, to drive demand, not necessarily selling directly to them. So that's, that's the distinction here. But certainly, you know, creating those relationships and hopefully, again, again, for, for you know, for you guys' point of view, you know, driving that, that pull, does that, does that cross a line to you then? Or is that, is that more, uh, is it more the actual selling and getting a PO from, from a customer? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, in my experience with manufacturers and working the channel, I've always been an end user rep, but um, there, you know, you're building that trust when you're taking that one layer away of the integrator or the reseller. Um, now you're kind of losing the trust of the channel. I mean, there's now, um, you know, one less opportunity for quoting or one less opportunity to um, look into other sales um, routes. But um, I've just noticed that uh, that it, it, it's, it's important to develop that relationship. And now you're kind of undercutting that relationship by going direct. But that I, it's certainly a model that you could use, but I, I've, I've always been used to kind of the channel mo model. Well, there's another issue that, um, that we haven't brought up is, is that, uh, is this the beginning of a very slippery slope? So let's say that a, a distributor, uh, adds 20% to the cost of something. And let's say that a reseller adds another 20% to the cost of something. Um, does DNB now able to come to market uh, and they're selling against, you know, uh, Nexo, Meyer, El Acoustic, um, are they now able to come to the market at 40% less than competing brands because this is factory direct to the customer? And that scares the living daylights out of me. Um, because that takes the entire food chain um, and shortens it, right? It's, it's factory and it's customer. Uh, traditionally, manufacturers have wanted a channel or a food chain because they have access to so many more customers and so many more relationships and feet on the street and ears in the ground and all those kinds of things. But maybe this just comes down to money and they're saying, why are we paying these people when we do all the work anyway? Um, it might not be the first German company to think that way. Uh, but it's uh, it's challenging for the market. I was just thinking, Tim, we just ask the guys at Neat what they think of the channel. Yeah, if you're if you're not familiar with Neat, yeah, just, I'm I'm not going to get into that, but but go ahead and, and look them up and kind of what they're doing. I I would I don't know, guys. I I look at residential, and to me, residential, and I doubt I know enough to be dangerous about that, and everything I've, I've learned was from Matt and, and the folks on the CDA side. That, to me, feels like more of a ready-made, direct-to-consumer market, and they still haven't done it, right? I mean, yeah, you can put Amazon in there, and you can put you know, um, Ring and, and Google and stuff in there, but you've still got companies that 100% depend on the channel, a hundred percent depend on the smarts uh, of the of the dealers. There might be some folks like DMB that are that are trying it, or like Rico that are trying it. But I, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sold on on the vast majority of the folks that will be at Infocom in, in October getting rid of the channel. I don't know. Thanks so much for watching this first segment of AV Week. To check out the rest of the episode for free. Click on the link below or go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.